The second stage is the rod. It's like Jonah's whale. This is not abandonment. But notice that before the whale, there was abandonment. God left Jonah for a while when he didn't pray. Instead of praying, Jonah slept. Instead of being ashamed of what he did and listening to the sea and the storm, he was stubborn. So the discipline increased from the level of abandonment to the next step up, which is the level of the rod. Sometimes the relationship with God becomes turbulent. If the person didn't pay attention or cry out, the rod would be the next step. This is all for the person's sake. If God didn't do this, Jonah would have perished. The whale was mercy from God. Likewise, there was an epileptic for David near the end of his life. David's life was full of mistakes and discipline too. One of them was a plague. In a time of lukewarmness, David was bragging about his people. He asked the leader of the army to count the people. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, Job said to the king, Now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times more than there are. God did not give a divine order to do this, so it was unnecessary. But David insisted on doing this. He wasn't praying these days. God was upset. David was bragging, although he was a shepherd before, God gave him all of this. God also saw that the people started to worship idols, and David did nothing. God used the rod on both David and the people at the same time so they would wake up. Prior to this, there was a period of abandonment, a period of lukewarmness. The people and David stopped praying. No psalms were written during this period. So God told him, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself that I may do it to you. Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land, or shall you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you, or shall there be three days plague in, in your land? It's like a father offers three punishments for his child to choose. David knew that crying out was too late. He would be punished. He said, I will be in the people's hands in war. Likewise, I will need other people in starvation. Forget the people. He said in 2 Samuel chapter 24, Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. You are kind, and I can win with you. I know that I should have cried sooner, but I will cry from now on. I choose the plague, because that's between you and me. So the Lord sent a plague. He knew God and knew that prayer is the solution to the lukewarmness, and he knew the benefit of punishment. David didn't stop praying, and God couldn't continue the punishment for too long. God couldn't continue the punishment in front of David's prayers. At the same location where the plague stopped, the temple was built. David bought the land and offered sacrifices and told Solomon that this was the land of making peace with God. Another example of one who received the heavy slap of a rod on his head was Nebuchadnezzar. He knew God and was Daniel's friend. Daniel was never lukewarm and never received these kinds of punishments that we're talking about. He was very committed. He warned Nebuchadnezzar many times, and Nebuchadnezzar admitted in chapter 2 that God was the only God. In chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar said that he himself was God, although he admitted before and worshipped God. Then he entered a period of abandonment. He stopped praying for a while, and then his pride increased and said that he built the Babylonian Empire. Then a dream came to him at night about the tree that would be cut down and only the stub would remain. He was terrified and consulted Daniel. Daniel said, I'll tell you the truth. I'm upset with you. I warned you many times. I told you to beware of what you are doing. What happened to you? This tree is you, and the rod will come and cut you down. You will remain in this state of punishment for seven years. Indeed, he became like a crazy person and left the palace and became like an animal. He stayed seven years in this punishment. At the end of the seven years, he looked up to the sky and gave glory to God, and the evil spirit was out. Daniel probably was praying for him. The rod was hard, but Nebuchadnezzar had a good relationship with God before. Another rod was on Miriam, Moses' sister. Miriam and Aaron became prophets because of Moses. Moses wanted to excuse himself from the mission, so God told him to take Aaron, Moses' brother, with him. When they crossed the Red Sea, Miriam led the people to praise God, so they were considered prophets. However, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. 
Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. God told them, How dare you talk bad things about Moses? And then in Numbers chapter 12, he says, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous. Aaron didn't get leprosy because he was the high priest. He begged Moses to pray to God. Then the Lord said to Moses, Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days, and afterwards she may be received again. He wanted her to know that what she did was wrong. It was discipline for an important character in the Bible. They were saints. They repented and became saints. But there is discipline for the saints too. Even when Moses prayed for her, God didn't cure her right away. There was another kind of discipline that happened to Abraham. Abraham was precious. He was God's friend. But he did something that upset God, which certainly came after a period of abandonment. The rod always comes after a period when the connection to God is severed. When a famine came, Abraham thought of going to Egypt instead of praying. He should have prayed first to see God's opinion about this, but he thought on his own and traveled. There they thought that asylum needed lying. He told Sarah to tell them that she was his sister. God was upset even more. Instead of praying first or going back, he continued. God disciplined him, but only a little bit because he was his friend after all. They took Sarah as a result of his actions. Then Abraham, of course, prayed a lot. God didn't allow something bad to happen because discipline is calculated. It doesn't harm. 